More modem mods and big external antennas, this time on Hack 5. Hey everyone, Glitch here and welcome back to Hack 5. In a previous video, I showed you how to mangle the TTL on an LTE modem so that you could get unlimited LTE hotspot without uh, needing a plan that is grandfathered in or something of the sort. Now that's only part of the solution I use in the van to have internet on the road. The other detail is I have a WeBoost Reach cell booster. Now this thing's great when you're out in the boonies in the middle of nowhere and you need to make a connection. It amplifies your signal strength both receiving and transmitting. However, in the city, this can actually pose several issues and being inside the metal van actually acts as a bit of a Faraday cage as Darren said to himself in this seven-year-old clip of him talking about how he gets internet in the van. It's a Faraday cage, so getting a signal out, kind of difficult. So now we need to get the radio that's in here out there, but I still gotta be inside. So it's gonna be out, but I'm inside. Basically what this does, is it's uh, the antenna on the roof is taking in that 3G signal. What I've done is I've taken a pineapple and I've taken one of my modems from Ting. Just see the thing is 3G modem is no different than a phone, really. I just plug it into here. I've already got my script set up with the key, keep alive and everything. And so now I can house my Wi-Fi pineapple in here, tie it all down, provide the juice. And uh, yeah, as long as I have these guys hanging out together, everything will be happy. And so I have my built-in van network with my Ting modem. It's already starting up and it will already, I can guarantee you, have better service. So very excited about that. So this has been an issue for a long time. He used a really old school booster that they don't even make anymore. However, you still don't want to use it in the city because it can actually play up with the cell towers and cause issues with E911, a service that lets people locate well, let's dispatchers locate where your phone is for emergency response. You can get into big trouble with that. So what can we do to improve our signal strength and get rid of the issue that is the Faraday cage and multipathing of using a modem or cellular device in the van? Well, we've got two options. We can just use the booster, which I don't wanna do, or we could use an external antenna. Now, the cool thing about the booster antenna is it's obviously the correct frequency to use with the LTE modem. It's designed for cell phones, after all. Now, we just need to connect that antenna to the modem. Well, this modem you can do it with because, well, I modified it. That's kind of the subject of this video. But a lot of people bought these based on my last video, and, well, they don't come with antenna connectors, so you just kind of, it, it doesn't work. So in this video, I'll be showing you how I actually popped this thing open and modified it with external antennas. Now, obviously these are little dangly bits, so I need to 3D print a bit to go on there. And we'll talk about that in the next video where I'm gonna be doing a even better implementation of this using dual external antennas so that you still get MIMO support. But in this video, we're gonna keep it simple. And the goal is to just connect these antennas with, well, antenna connectors. So the first thing you have to do is open the modem. Now, this is pretty easy. You just pop off the SIM card cover, pull the SIM card out, take out those three screws, and take a spudger, or in my case, a metal flathead screwdriver, because I don't care too much about marring the case up. It's been dropped a few times anyway. And you just pop it open and go all the way around the edge and release all of the clips. That pops the back case off. After that, you will see the LTE modem. Now, this is an MPCIE-based modem called the EC25. At least that's what the US versions of this modem use. Now we're in luck here because we don't need to solder or anything. It uses UFL or IPEX connectors to simply connect the antennas to the board. So with a little bit of work, you can wiggle those connectors off and take out the whole board with four screws around the corners. And here's a fun little detail. This thing is using in body, so they're molded into the plastic. They're little antennas that use metal contacts and the pressure of the screws holding the board in place to actually make the connection from the PCB to the antennas. I've never seen anything like this. I figured this would play heck with high frequencies like this, so it's really cool to see conformal antennas all built into this case. However, we aren't gonna use those anymore. Now you can either remove them or just tuck the connectors off to the side. So now once you've got the board out, you need to drill one or two holes, depending on how you want to do it, in the top. I'd do it towards the center. I had made an attempt to actually mount the antenna, the SMA connector, to the case. 
However, I quickly realized that there just was not enough clearance in the case for it, so I fed the antenna through, and I will be 3D printing an adapter to hold it on the top. After you've drilled the hole, you can feed your antenna through, put the board back in place, and route your antenna wire down the side to the channel they conveniently left, and connect it to the modem. After that, you can button the whole modem up back in the reverse process of taking it apart, and you now have antenna connectors on your modem. It's as easy as that. Most other modems have the antenna connectors soldered to the card, but this one uses a socketed modem, which is really nice. This also means that if a 5G MPCIE modem ever comes out, in theory, you could just swap it in if there's the driver support for it. That's a pretty cool detail on this little thing, and I wouldn't be surprised if they went and did this themselves. It's a really easy way to upgrade a product. A couple details to note, you shouldn't remove or add antennas to any device while it's powered. Now, the main reason for this is if it's a high power transmitting device, you can actually overload the circuitry. It effectively goes to an infinite resistance, which can cause a lot of heat to build up very quickly and fry components. There's also the issue of putting the antenna connector on at a slight angle and shorting it out. For a device like this, that would be the bigger concern. Yeah, you can be careful and work around it, but the best thing to do is just turn off the device, put your antennas on, and turn it back on. Now for testing and what will work for most people because they're not in a Faraday cage, I used these antennas here. These are just LTE antennas. They were like 12 bucks on Amazon, nothing special about them. However, I went from an RSSI of negative 84 in the van to negative 75 or 74, somewhere around there. So that's a pretty huge increase, especially when you consider that's a nonlinear scale. That's an exponential scale of dB gain. However, I wanted more. I got an adapter to connect the WeBoost antenna from my booster directly, bypassing the booster, directly to the modem. This got me all the way from negative 84 dBi to negative 66. It does not really get much better than that. This also solved multiple issues with what's called multipathing, where a signal gets to the receiver after bouncing through multiple things and also direct line of sight. This causes big issues, especially in latency intensive things like video games. Now, I do like to play CSGO and some other games from time to time, and I've gotten very sensitive to the latency on those games. I was teleporting around back and forth before I did this mod. After doing the mod and getting the antenna on the outside of the van so multipathing wasn't an issue and I had better signal, it worked great. I have not had any lag issues, and I've been getting those 40-20 KDs all day long. It also greatly helped my download speeds as well as you can imagine. There's no packet collisions or anything else anymore. So I'm going from about 5 by 2 on a good day inside the van to well over 40 by 20 on down. This is a pretty substantial increase, which also means I can upload videos more faster. And that's really all there is to it. This is a very simple mod. You literally are just pulling the thing apart, drilling a hole or two in the case, throwing it all back together and coming up with some way to mount the antennas to the thing so you don't have dangly cables. I was really happy to see that the Glynet is this hackable. It only reinforces my love of this device more. It is what's keeping me online and on the road right now. So if you'd like to get one, I have some associate links down in the description below. Uh, I get a little kickback from that at no extra cost to you. And beyond that, that's about all there is to it. I've been Glitch. This has been Hack5. Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.